Onward, 13th Legion. On patrol, perfect. Brigands, 13 of them. Some marksmen, many riders. Let's go get them. I just want to make sure none of these guys on the back lines have the felt useless in reserve debuff. I think we got them to fight recently. So this fight, our raiders aren't going to have their shields out, and then it's daytime. So we'll see what the marksmen can do to us. Hopefully not too much. See, I haven't taken the precaution of giving the uh, kite shields this time. So already the marksmen have hit one of two shots at us, but if they're going to leave these guys uh, out in the open, that's not very smart. Our archers should make quick work of them if we can get shots at them. Yeah, that, that was brain dead, leaving them out in the open like that. Don't do that. Against the 13th Legion. was uninspiring. Do I just give him the old run at with Lars? I think I do. 3v1. Uh, honestly, these are just hunters bow hunting bows. They're not going to do a whole lot to us. Let's see, so Lucius goes there. Scipio goes there. Boone steps in there, which means Grimald goes... 1, 2, 3 goes there. Oh! If that was a headshot, that would have been a dead, dead nerd. Oh, one hit me, fleeing. Love it. Oh, that is the fearsome perk doing work for us. Careful lads. Oh, going for the archers, cheeky. Now you'll notice on my raiders I'm not using any um, uh, any two-handed axes. I've experimented with a two-handed axe in the offline campaign against the greenskin invasion and the two-handed axe is Obviously incredible for shredding armor, particularly if you're fighting like an orc uh, warrior or an orc warlord. However, the problem with the, with the Axen is it's such an all-in all weapon, you can really only use the single target ability because the amount of times you can swing in a circle and actually have it be useful is, is tiny. Because more often than not you're going to be hitting your own guys, which is obviously disastrous. And I mean, the... Warhammers and the two-handed swords can swing in a smaller arc and just they're just more useful And the the Warhammer does comparable armor damage to what the two-handed sword uh, two-handed axe does oh, These poor raiders they're getting absolutely slaughtered Again, let's not forget how, how harshly we were treated by uh, raiders in the earlier part of the game and how tough it was. Off with his head, nerd. Ooh. That's another reason I'm not crazy about the swing in a circle with the, with the axe skill. More often than not, the majority of the guys you're going to be swinging at are going to be having shields. So you're unlikely to hit them anyway. Cell swords have pretty good gear as well. They do, but they are super expensive. Although, uh, the expense isn't really an issue for us at this point. I mean, we are fairly wealthy. I mean, we'll just pop into all the major cities and see what we can find. Evening, Skulder. It has been a while. Sorry, man. I've been a little unwell. Ah, oh, yes.
this poor raider. He's gonna have a bad time shortly. Get wrecked. Ooh. Oh, the damage of those war bows. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, two swings and a miss. Bad internet. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and also at some point I'm going to move back to South Africa and then there's going to be a few months where I'm going to have no internet and then even when I do have internet I'm worried about how terrible it's going to be. But I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Is any of this even worth looting? What the hell, all of it. But for the time being, while I'm here in the UK, keep appreciating and enjoying the good internet. So let's follow these footprints and see if we can't find a hideout. Oh, they just stopped. They came out of nowhere. That's weird. We have explored here. Oh, there's probably a bandit camp that has spawned there since since the beginning when we first explored it. <sighs> Multiple disconnect hell divers. <laughs> yeah. Hell divers. Used to love that game. It was so good. What do you have for us? A witch hunter and a day tailor. That's all right. Uh, not much to buy here. Onward. Seventeen more heads required. I want to take on this place here, White Bones Hollow, but I'm scared though, it, it is legit scary though, Th those auxiliaries, no, sorry, the legionaries are pretty terrifying. Many ancient honor gods, many, so it's eight honor gods, I reckon we can take them on, look, look at the quality of the armor we have. And I reckon if we just keep our uh, shields up on front, the front line, we should be good. And this is the perfect time when I want to use the throwing axes against these guys, because these war bows, I don't think are going to do all that much damage. I reckon the throwing axes are going to do a lot of armor damage. I think two of the archers will leave the war bows, and then red archers will stay with the war bows, and the green archers will just start with throwing axes. Or they'll maybe switch to throwing axes. We'll... Let's compromise. Let's just see uh, how much damage the war bows do. This is exactly why I hung on to all of these throwing axes for so long. Uh, I need to hang around until morning, I think. Yeah, it's gone dark, so... Uh, Skulder, there was a Lord Skulder. I just got to look through this long list of murdered people. I'm pretty sure you were here. And I think there's only your guy that you smuggled in by giving the name backwards. Here we go. Dol Ridlux. <laughs> Dol Ridlux. Yeah, there he is. The bright, tiny gravedigger who doesn't have the greatest melee skill. But he's quite good with melee defense and range defense. And he goes berserk occasionally. Honestly, when he goes level 11, instead of, like, normally, I think I'm going to go fearsome and fast adaption rather than fearsome and killing frenzy because he does miss rather a lot. And fast adaption is going to help with that. Or actually, you know what? I, th I think we go, we go killing frenzy and quick hands just so that the raiders can start like this, get into the front line and then, and then whip out their two-hander weapons. Right. Ancient Honor God. This is going to be scary. Hang on, this annoys me. Like, before we got there, it said many Ancient Honor God. Now it says lots. Anyway, look at these weapons. Let's just see what kind of damage we do with these bows, and then we'll decide whether we actually stay and fight or not. Okay. 
those weapons aren't going to do that much damage. I mean, remember, we are, we are in a good enough position where if we have to, in a pinch, we can just retreat. Everyone will get injured, but then we just spend a few days uh, getting, getting healed up. And we can still finish this patrol mission and still be in the red. I mean, basically running away and getting everybody injured is going to cost us like 3,000 gold. But we have 6,000 in the bank. Oh, I forgot to switch to throwing axes on these guys. Let's take a look at the kind of... Yeah, that's no armor damage whatsoever. So what is the... 32 to 45 damage to armor. How much damage to armor does it? Throwing axe do. I'll check that out with one of the other guys. What scares me is that these, uh, I forget they're called again, the scythes will be able to attack my archers. Uh, 27 to 44 damage to armor, so it's actually the same. Yeah, it's the same as a warbow, so it's not worth using. It was how much to armor? 32 to 45. Okay, so the throwing axes actually do less. 27 to 44 as opposed to 32 to 45. Okay. Let's be brave here. We can stun them, that's encouraging. Ooh. And I feel like it's gonna be worth it just to send our archers around the flanks because if well they could just shoot randomly into the into the group. I mean these guys aren't likely to go anywhere. I don't think it's worth spending time sending my archers to take flanking shots. So the bows and the crossbows have a uh, penalty against ancient dead, the throwing axes and javelins do not, at least on damage to health. So I'll tell you what we'll do, we will... Uh, okay, that's a good hit. We will attack with one of the archers and then we'll take a look on the console, see what the console, the, the log, to see how much armor damage it does. And then we'll, we'll throw a throwing axe and compare. And I suspect that you are probably right. I'm going to sacrifice my dogs here just because I want some other targets. Once one of these hits... Well, I'm going to have to flank with him now. At least the Overwhelm is, is helping. That, that's, you know, think of that as a... Uh... Oh, look at that! Should be focusing down one at a time, I reckon. Yeah, keep that nerd stunned, I think. 56%. It's just a sword, I don't need to worry about it. One down, berserk. Oh, didn't do too much. Yeah, it starts getting scary. Ooh! And they all have fearsome, that's also worth remembering. Oh, good god. Run, super duper. The curved thing is a war scythe and it hurts like hell. Okay, 91%. That's. How much armor damage did that do? Ancient Honor Guard helmet is hit for 31 damage. Okay. So that's well within the range of what it was described as doing. Now we'll just look at the damage that one of the warbows do when we eventually get one to hit. So that was Ancient hit for 27. So it's, it's about the same. 
I'm pretty sure you'll only, only notice the difference once we've actually gotten through the armor. And we're doing hit point uh, damage. Nice. Good work. Super duper hero legend. Oh, good job. So they, they all focus their damage on uh, on Boon Adripus. And we'll just get him to move back. Yes, boys. Oh, for God's sake. I was convinced he would have been able to go before these guys. Oh, that sucks. We've lost one of our best raiders. You motherfuckers. Archie. Unobstructed shots now, at least. So it's good. Let's focus one of these buggers down at a time. And also, bear in mind, this is the first time I'm fighting this this type of enemy. And the big takeaway for me on this is that I would have been better off leaving the archers behind and taking pikemen or long axe users who probably could have done more. Can't these war sides hurt? Also, we gotta get Alexander off the front line now, he's gonna be in trouble. Oh, so close! Ouchie. I'm breaking as well. Get stunned, you nerd. So I actually need I need twinkle toes to be able to move here, but I don't want to I don't want to use knockback because it'll just put him there, and then we have to surround ourselves. So fifty percent. What the hell? Just try to get straight through him, I suppose. These fuckers have reach advantage. Look at that. Come on, hit the body, there you go. Out of ammo. Yeah man, these ancient dead are such ball bags. Uh, ancient honor gods are a pain if you don't have enough two-handed weapons, yeah. Damn, I'm so disappointed Super Duper died there. I was convinced I could have got him away there without taking damage to him. Are we going to lose Lars as well? That was a headshot, thank goodness. I'd better be able to... Uh, if, if this raise morale fails, then Lars is dead. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Ugh... Come on, Lars, just please dodge. <sighs> that was scary. At least the Overwhelm is uh, lowering their attack and defense stats. God, these things are terrifying. I really would have benefited from having a two-handed axe here. 
Lesson learned. Oh, damn it, I wanted to keep this line open so that... Mm. Decent bit of damage, I suppose. It's also very, very obvious that of all of these ancient dead we fought, it's it's these it's the honor guards that have the two-handed weapons that are the real threat. Come on. Anytime you want to come back to the fight, you're welcome to, Lars. No room for cowards in the 13th Legion. Ah, oh, rip, boon, Agippus. Um, the throwing axes, I discussed this in the previous episode, they are situationally amazing in the early to mid game. But overall, they, they're just not worth it. I mean, I've experimented with them in an offline campaign where I did everything I could to try and make the throwing axes as useful as possible. Which is by taking throwing weapon speciality, and by taking deep pockets and quick hands, which you need. At that point then, they are great at shredding armor. They can even destroy shields, because they do a fair amount of damage if they hit a shield. But the thing is then, once you get to a tier 3 crossbow or a tier 3 warbow, there's just no reason to use the throwing, throwing weapons. And you can, you've got 3 slots in your inventory, if you take deep pockets it's 5. So that's a stack, or well, that's 20 throwing axes in total. Which is still only 2 uh, quivers of arrows. And so you, and you've had to spend 2 perks to be able to get 2 thirds of the amount of ammo as you would have for comparable damage on a bow. It's, it's just not worth it. So, the, the perk gives you plus 40% damage on a throwing axe if you're throwing from two tiles away. Which means the throwing axe has comparable damage to a warbow. Which is great in the early to mid game when you can't afford a warbow. But once you can actually afford a warbow, there's, there's, use the warbow. And there's none of the drawbacks of the short range. Oh man, we lost one of our best today. Rip. And he was our only warhammer uh, user. Sucks. And we didn't even get a, uh, a special weapon from that, or a legendary item. That's super disappointing. Uh, all we got was some shit armor. Totally not worth it. Alright, we need to go camp to get our items repaired. Man, that was not worth it. Ah! Honestly, at this point, I think I can sell all these throwing axes now. And the only time they're going to be good is if we're fighting against uh, ancient legionaries. Yeah, we don't need all these throwing axes. They, they might have been useful earlier on when we didn't have the war bows, but now that we've got them, no reason to have them whatsoever. Also, not needed. Kopesh is nice. I've already got one uh, cleaver specialist. I don't see us having a second one, so I think we can we can flog that. The war scythe, 55 to 80. You can attack three people with it. That's actually very, very, very nice. We'll give that to the Cassus. Oh no, but he's already a has, he's already a, an axe master. I think what I can do then is I can turn Bertwin into a pikeman. 
And then in those type of fights, we can use him. And he can use the War Scythe with Reap. Hell yeah. So what we need here is we need uh, two more soldiers who we're going to turn into. We need one more Haskell and one more Pikeman. And then in those kind of fights, we just leave the archers behind and we sub in the, the pikemen. Unfortunately, Picasus is already leveled up as a backup sergeant, so I suppose we need three more who we can turn into pikemen. And the pikemen will level up with... Okay, Bertwin is a bit of an exception because he's such a crap guy. He's only a historian, but with pikemen, I like taking adrenaline, fast adaption, Anticipation because they're going to be on the back line getting shot at by archers a lot. Uh, a poleaxe, mastery, footwork, battle forged, berserk, and killing frenzy. So the idea is if Picausus has uh, adrenaline, he can on his turn he can split a shield and use adrenaline and then get an attack off before the guy whose shield he broke can react. Uh, 180 hit points for 13 armor. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Who has a 13 fatigue helmet? Twelve for 200 and this is 13 for 180. Yeah, not worth it. Sell, sell, sell. Oh, I'm gutted we lost super duper. So you tried building a duelist with javelins and was amusing for a time, he was dealing out injuries left and right, but a normal archer is better, definitely. I would also say that that, that javeliner is going to get exhausted so quick because it costs 15 fatigue to throw a javelin. There need to be some fundamental changes made to the throwing weapons to make them usable, but unfortunately the game is, is, is done being changed. So we're not going to see those changes. 56 provisions per day. Holy crap, why so much? Well, let's make our way to Wollen Walk and get some more food there. Get iron lungs and recover. It helps some, um, yeah. Recover always annoys me though because you have to spend an entire turn. If recover was a free action, it would be amazing. Even if it. Well, no, then I suppose that would be OP. Oh, I've just. <sighs> I hate the fact that you have to spend a turn to use recover to recover fatigue but if I just spent the turn doing nothing I would recover 30 fatigue which is enough to use whatever I want to use that turn anyway. Mm. I mean the, the real reason you want rec recover is so that you can uh, make sure that your sergeant can use his raise morale trick but very often if you're in a tight fight that's you know where it's on a knife edge whether you're going to win it or not having to spend that one turn to rest means the person who used morale you're trying to, to fix is dead anyway yeah I know that 15 per turn without iron lungs it's 20 per turn with iron lungs let's see 100 uh, that that's good what do you have for us? A caravan hand, a deserter, a hound's master. On the plus side, we should have close to 10,000 gold when we complete this mission. Okay, we need six more heads. Oh, what's this? It's a big group of something. Okay. Grunfeld the company. That's a huge party. Some bull men. So you noticed how in that... No, I didn't click on the damn city. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, well. Ooh, Fritz the Veteran. It's tempting to hire a tired soldier, but his, his, his armor is no good. Gerhold the Black is quite nice. Egil is nice, but again, all this armor here is rubbish. And they don't even have the armor that we really want. Look at that coat of scales. Wow. 
38 fatigue though. Who's gonna wear that? Let's take a look at our two raiders. So an extra eight fatigue. I mean Lars could wear it, I suppose. I'm imagining 75 minus 8, or that's even less because of uh, because of Brawny. Yeah, actually, our Raiders could, could definitely wear that. But 9.5 grand, good lord. I think I need that closed mail. One of my archers is an open-faced one. Okay, I want to start looking at these helmets, so 19 fatigue, 20 fatigue for 300, wow. Let's look at the fatigue numbers, 87, I think Lars can wear heavier, heavier armor, 81, I think 230 is what I want as a minimum on the front lines, but wherever the fatigue permits it. So I was saying we need to hire some pikemen, but it's going to be super tough to get them the uh, experience they need. I think the pikemen and uh, and the huskals we'll hire are going to be the hedge knight and that type of thing. And none of these guys that were in there are anyone I wanted to hire. House Periwinger. Ooh, they, they took German Shaft. Yeah, we should go check it out. Look, I, I get you, Wolfric. I mean, recover is a good skill, but I mean, I, I, I try to be hyper aggressive. I like the idea of doing as much damage as quickly as you can, and then that way, I mean, that's how you keep your guys safe by killing anything that is attacking you as quickly as you can. Uh, you cannot enter Baron Leaf on Perwinger's room. Instead, one of his commanders meets you outside with a map and a contract. Great battle is coming, and your help is needed. If you choose to accept, you go to Sud Dombert, northwest of here, and await further instruction. I don't think I want to do a great battle just yet. Also because I don't know how tough they're going to be. Uh, if, if, it's, if it's got to do with fighting the war, sure. But not if it's a great battle, if it's... Mm. Oh yeah, true, yeah. No, you're right, you're right, you're right, Wolfric. I mean, you don't need to sell me on, on, on the benefits of, of recover, but I mean, I'm looking at my at my characters, and the only person I would think of taking it on is is Alexander. And when I have taken it on, everybody up front. I mean, what, what would I not take on Lucius here to take recover? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I suppose student, but then student is such an important skill. Uh, gifted. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even have footwork on him, which is actually a mistake. I should have taken footwork instead of killing frenzy. Arguably, you could not take a weapon mastery, and then you take recover instead, and that you know allows your character then to be more, uh, more easily able to adapt to different battle situations. But then, yeah, I don't know. Weapon-wise, I don't think we... Ooh, well, hello, look at that. Sir Herman Skewer. 43 to 49. Look at those values. That, that is amazing. For 12 grand. Ouch. I think everybody up front is already using a tier 3 weapon. Yeah, tier 3. Tier 3. Tier 3. Tier 3. Yeah, everyone's got tier 3 weapons. Yeah, like, that's all, uh, part of what I love about this game. You, you can you can talk about perks till the cows come home. You know, there's there's no one single right way to level up anybody. There are just ways of leveling up that are better in some situations than in others. I love that about this game. I've just been yeah. I was kind of hoping that the options of who we could hire would have changed, but it's all going to be the same. Egil is tempting, but six thousand gold. All we're really getting out of that is that axe, which I don't particularly want. And if he's an egg and doesn't have good stats, then it's a complete waste. 
Let's go check out the other cities. I am going to check out Steinberg though. Ste Steinberg might have worked for us. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments and now in chat about where we're going with the campaign in January, like more long term. I don't want to count my chickens before the hatch in terms of thinking that we're going to win this war. But if we do win this war, what do you guys think we should do? Should we call this campaign quits and start a new one under some different parameters or just keep going uh, and just keep going for different ambitions? Go for the go for the goblin ambition. Go for the, you know, just see how long we can go. Eventually... I mean, it'll take, it's going to take more than a year. It's going to take like 200 days to get us strong enough and experienced enough that we can fight everything on the map. We can do the Orc City. We can do the Goblin City. We can do the Black Monolith. But that's going to take hundreds of hours of play to get to that position. I don't know. I think at a certain point, I might turn this into a, a quote-unquote offline campaign where I'll stop showing you guys just grinding past the 150-day mark. And then when there's something particularly notable, like a, like a big battle, like fighting an orc warlord or, or fighting the goblin shaman, you know, then I can make a special uh, mission for that. So long I can last, yeah? That's true. I mean, hell, we almost lost two of our best soldiers in that previous fight, and uh, as we know, if you fall behind, it's disastrous. I should actually be stopping in here to see if I can find uh, it doesn't go down and play in the head pull back well-known weapon from the goblins east of here I should check some of those out I mean goblins east of here if it's gonna be boom hooks defensible outburst I don't know if I should be focusing on this now or whether I should rather be focusing on the war I think we focus on the war I mean I'd love to get those legendary weapons but you know I I would hate it if we go after a legendary weapon and we end up getting everybody killed for it and then we end up losing the war because of that. I'm just fishing for house affiliated war missions now. Keep going, agreed. Ooh, I like that the gem mine has been rebuilt. Salt has been rebuilt. Come on, give us a house affiliated mission. And north of here in the plains. Stake last week. Uh, I suppose we can do some of these grain missions just to keep us busy. What is this? Something of great value has been stolen. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm going to keep bouncing between all the Periwinger houses and see whether we can get missions to help with the war. But if we can't find any, I reckon we should still be doing whatever we can here. Uh, please stop me, but there are early game characters and you'll have to retire them eventually if you want to win those harder battles. Yeah, true. So I think what we should be doing is let's just keep bouncing around all the cities trying to find missions to help with the war. Let's keep saving up money uh, until we can find a hedge knight or one of those top tier characters that has top tier gear. I also noticed how the descriptions are now not being entirely accurate. I mean before the battle started it said a bandit marksman which suggests it should have been one but now there's three of the buggers and did you guys see how much hit points look at that that's 13 hit point damage just from a tier one crossbow Yeah, I haven't, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm acutely aware of how inexperienced I am with these noble battles. I just really don't want to get myself killed. Uh, and also, like, with the Greenskin Invasion, the Break Siege missions are friggin' tough. 
And if those great battle missions are anything like that, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Oh, that, well, that must have been a headshot. Electora uses quick shots. It's killed Brigand Raider. Uh, it doesn't say where it hit him. Okay. That had to have been a headshot to one shot him like that. Woo. Whoopsie, wrong button. I meant to use Twinkle Toes to attack in the line. Oh well. The one thing I really want to see added to this game is the ability to give commands to your war dogs. Even if it's just, you know, get back in my pocket. So they don't. Because this dog is probably dead on the next turn. And that's just a waste of money, which is, you know, irritating. Whoa! Oh, wow! Scipio! Oh. oh man, these poor raiders. They are freaking the fuck out. Oh, for good reason. Get him, Mark Anthony. Oh, almost. We'll be super careful not shoot any of our lads in the back. Oh, off with his head. Healthcare worker, thank you for the follow. Welcome to Camelot. Tis a silly place. Yes. Shooting. Um, healthcare worker, are you a real healthcare worker? Because I've got this rash. Maybe you can check out. I'm sure it's totally fine. Hmm. It's only a model. Shh. <laughs> Get him! Come on, Dole. I'm glad you like it, healthcare worker. I think the mon the, the pythons don't get enough respect. I'm sounding like an old man, but the youth of today don't uh, don't appreciate the pythons. I, I've got a co-worker who's in his early twenties, uh, and he actually doesn't know who Monty Python is. Like, I thought he was taking the piss out of me. He's like, "What is that? Is that like an old movie?" That I'm like, "Oh my word!" And I suppose it is an old movie, but. Are not my thing. Yeah, fair enough. Like it makes me realize how old I am when I talk to someone and like they they never watched Friends. They're not fans of Metallica. They like they don't know what Faulty Towers and Monty Python is. I'm like, how can you be allowed to be a human being that walks around and talks and is part of society and you don't know those things? I tell you, when I come to power, those are the first people that'll go get taken out of my society. <laughs> You know who doesn't like Monty Python? Isis. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like Monty Python, you must be Isis. That's logic, you can't argue with that. Pure logic. Uh, what do we have here? That's junk, that's junk, that's junk. Uh, hmm. There's not much... Ooh, hello, we've got a cell sword, but again, his gear is terrible. Okay, so I'm tempted to hire a cell sword, but I'm only going to hire him if he's got really good gear. I think we should hire a retired... We should aim to get cell sword, hedge knight, retired soldier, adventurous noble. We'll keep an eye open for those type of guys. Nothing more to be seen here. No injuries to treat, nothing to buy here. Alright, we move on. 
I think we did good, we did good work this episode. When we come back, we'll see if we can't get involved in the war again. <laughs>